Hey everyone! Today we're going to be looking at how to jailbreak your first generation iPad on iOS version 9.3.5. Now, there are a few different ways to go about jailbreaking your device, all dependent on the system hardware of the device, iOS version, and your host's operating system. In this video, I'm going to be using Windows 10 but this method should apply to all the different variations, 7 and up. If you are on a Mac or Linux OS, you have a few different methods of sideloading the jailbreaking app onto your device. I may cover those methods in another video. To start the jailbreak, you will want to go ahead and download the web version of iTunes to cover any missing dependencies that allow your iPad mini to talk with your Windows machine. To do that, we'll go ahead and search iTunes on your preferred search engine. So here, we'll just go ahead and search up iTunes, and we'll click on the first link. Make sure that you are on the right website, and instead of getting it from the Microsoft Store like they want you to, we're going to get the desktop or web version, and to do that, you're going to want to scroll down and find this looking for other versions section and we'll go ahead and click on the Windows section. It will bring us to a new page where we can download the latest version for Windows. And for most people you're going to have a 64-bit machine but if you know that your machine is running 32-bit go ahead and download that. Once your download is finished we'll go ahead and install iTunes onto your computer. You'll want to go through, personally, I don't really use iTunes for everything, for anything, so I disable all the optional extensions, and I will leave the destination folder the same. So we'll go ahead and allow, and continue with the process of installing iTunes. Now that iTunes is open, we can go ahead and open iTunes. And here's iTunes. You don't have to do anything else with iTunes. You just want to have it installed just in case your iPad has trouble talking with your computer. There may be additional pop-ups that appear asking if you want to download iCloud. And the app that we're going to be using to sideload the IPAs onto our device recommends that you should have iCloud installed, but you can go ahead and install iCloud when it prompts you to. Now that we have iTunes installed, we'll go ahead and get the side loading app, which can be done from sideloadly.io. And all these links will be in the description below. Once you're on sideloadly, you will scroll down and find the sideloadly download link for your operating system's architecture. Like I said before, I'm using a 64-bit Windows OS, so I'm going to go ahead and download that. Now that the download has finished, we'll go ahead and install that. And you can, like before, you can change the destination folder. I keep it all defaults, but now that we have sideloadly installed, we can uncheck the desktop and we'll run side loadly in a bit after we get the jailbreaking IPA. So once that's installed, the next step is to get the IPA for jailbreaking. Now for 9.3.5, there are two main IPAs that are used for jailbreaking. One of them is phoenixpone.com or the Phoenix app and the other is Polaris. The Phoenix app is a closed sourced jailbreaking app, but it's been used for a very long time and a lot of people have had success with it. In my other videos, I've also used Phoenix jailbreak, but there is a open source version of a jailbreaking app made by this developer, SPV. It's kind of a pick your flavor. Both of them should achieve the same result and it's just kind of up to your choice who you'd rather support. I'm going to go ahead and download the Phoenix app, the IPA. I'm also going to download the Polaris IPA just to show you if there's any differences between them. 
So we'll go ahead and try to download the Phoenix app, IPA, and I'll just save it to my downloads folder. Now, a problem that you guys might fall into is that Windows Defender or Windows Security will flag this file as uh, an exploit or a Trojan or a virus. And that's because there's a lot of exploits within the IPA that Windows will see and trigger a flag and will sandbox the IPA to make sure it doesn't infect your system. But the jailbreaking app has all these exploits for the iPhone system to enable jailbreaking. An example of why it would flag it, we can go to the site called virustotal.com and we can upload the IPA that we have to it and it will do a scan and see what it comes back with. And here we see that there are a few flags that it comes up with and at first that might scare you away but if you take a little bit closer look you'll see that they are labeled as trojans but they're exploits for ios for jailbreaking and these are all saying that they're just jailbreaking exploits and that's a big reason why windows defender will flag it right here you see that windows defender did end up flagging it and here we can see that it found a Trojan. So we'll go ahead and allow it on our device. And we'll see if the Windows Defender did sandbox it. So it didn't because we were able to, oh, there we go, it got sandboxed. So we should be able to download it again, save it. And Windows Defender shouldn't complain as it should have the same hash. And okay, so it keeps on just sandboxing it even though we allowed it. So if you do run in that pro into that problem where the Defender will just keep on sandboxing the IPA or your download file, you can go ahead and click on your home menu search up Defender for Windows Security and navigate to the Virus and Threat Protection section and down here at the Virus and Threat Protection settings we can manage settings and we can turn off the real-time protection so we'll turn that off it'll prompt you for an application so we see that now it's both, uh, I do have malware bytes and the Windows Defender and malware bytes are both turned off. For our current use case, that is fine right now. I'd highly recommend turning it back on after you've successfully downloaded the app and sideloaded the app onto your device. But for now, we'll keep it off. Now, with our Windows Defender off, we are at a slight security risk and to help mitigate that we're going to check the SHA-256 of the IPA just to make sure it's the correct IPA and that the download file hasn't been modified. To do that we'll go ahead and open up your Windows search, type in PowerShell. Once we're in PowerShell we will change directory with the command cd into the directory containing the IPA. For me, that is the downloads folder. And you can start typing download and pressing tab will autocomplete if it finds the correct directory. So with that, we will click enter. And now we can see that I'm in the downloads folder now. From here, we will type in get file hash and then the IPA in question, which is the Phoenix. There again, I auto completed with pressing tab and we'll click enter and it will come back and provide us a hash that we can then verify it is the same one. Now that we verified that the Phoenix IPA is the correct and legit version 
we're gonna go ahead and install the app using side loadly through onto our iPad. To do that, we'll go ahead and plug in our iPad into our device now. And we have a successful connection. So your iTunes might pop up. You don't really have to do anything with it. You just cancel it. And now that we have our iPhone connected, or sorry, our iPad mini connected, we will go ahead and open up our side load the app. So we can go down, we can even search up side loadly. Go ahead and open it up. And here we see that the iDevice field has been fill filled in and it's it was able to find my iPad. The next step you'll want to do is click on the IPA icon or you can drag in the IPA and we'll navigate over to our downloads folder where we download the IPA. Go ahead and open that up and you'll see the Phoenix icon. And for the Apple ID, you are going to want to input your Apple ID. Now here's a disclaimer. You are highly recommended to create a new Apple ID just for jailbreaking as personally I don't know what side loadly does and on their website they say that they are only transmitting your IP address your operating system and the side loadly version now that's all fine if that is what they actually do but since it is closed source we don't actually know what they're doing what they're logging they do require your Apple ID and password to be sent to the Apple servers and if you haven't already been doing this and you use the same password for all your accounts this is a big reason why you would want to one have different passwords for every account that you have using a password manager to help make it faster and two you don't want to have your password and Apple ID being stored or logged on side load these servers just in case they do have nefarious motives. So you can go ahead and make a new Apple ID. It's really simple. If you don't have another phone number, you can use a service like Google Voice to get a free VoIP number and Apple will use that to create your account. And here we have the Apple ID that I created and we'll go ahead and click start. You can take a look at the advanced options. I didn't even bother to mess around with it, but I'll go ahead and click start after inputting the Apple ID. And it will ask you for your password. So you can go ahead and input that whenever it pops up. So here it didn't ask me to authenticate my Apple ID which is actually very confusing as I had to do that earlier. We can see that the Phoenix app should be installed onto your iPad and we'll go over there and take a look. Now that we have the Phoenix or the Polaris app side loaded onto our iPad, we can go ahead and open up either or. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the Phoenix app. And here you should get a message saying that the developer is an untrusted one and to remedy that we can click cancel scroll over onto your settings and go to general and we should go all the way down and you should see this device management section and we'll go ahead and click on that and you'll click on your Apple ID and you'll trust the yourself as the developer so we can go ahead and trust once it's trusted go back to our home screen back to the Phoenix app and now we can see that my iPad is not jailbroken so to remedy that we'll just click prepare for jailbreak we will accept the terms and conditions we will dismiss any ads and if you see down here, there is a proceed with jailbreak. We'll go ahead and click that. 
and we'll click install to start the Insidia. And because our device is supported through Phoenix, we will just go ahead and use provided offsets. With that done, we will click done just to make sure it's the storage might the storage fold might pop up, but we can just click OK with that and continue on. And your iPad should automatically reboot by itself. Now that the iPad is fully booted back up, we can go ahead and unlock the device. And if we scroll over, we should be able to see the Cydia app. So if you want to go ahead and open it up, this is where you will find all the tweaks and modifications that a jailbroken device allows you to do. Now on the first load, it will sometimes give you an error, like here, where it, as it's trying to fetch through all the repos, it will give you an error. And to fix these errors, you can go ahead and click on return to Cydia. We can go ahead and ignore this update for now. And we'll go over to the sources section. Here, we're going to want to edit and remove this repo 666 ultra snow, as I believe it's defunct now. So we'll go ahead and delete that. And we can click done. And we can actually go ahead and click this refresh button just to check through all the sources. And we should not get any pop-ups for any errors. So one thing of note is that this jailbreak is a semi-untethered jailbreak, which essentially means if your iPad turns off or runs out of battery, the device will no longer be jailbroken. So in this example, I've already powered off my iPad and if we try to open up the Cydia app, it'll just keep on crashing. Now, the nice thing about a semi-untethered jailbreak is that because you still have your jailbreaking apps, either Polaris or Phoenix, you can easily just open up one of them and run the jailbreak again. Here, the Polaris app has jailbroken my device and is restarting the springboard. And if you notice, Polaris doesn't have any ads, while the Phoenix app does have a lot of ads and miscellaneous pop-ups. Now that our device is back on, we can go over and try out the City app. And here you can see that it is still broken, so we will try to run the jailbreak once again. We'll go on over and attempt to open it up. And as you can see, third time is a charm and we are able to load up Cydia with all the tweaks and modules. And there you have it. You now have a fully jailbroken iPad mini running on 9.3.5. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or concerns, go ahead and put them in the comments and I will do my best to try and help you get through any problems that you're having. And don't forget, turn back your Windows Defender to be active monitoring. Hit all the buttons, you know, if this video helped you, be a plug, pass it on, and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Thanks.